if you have gyno, then of course um, training and physical activity is going to be extremely, extremely beneficial in helping you to reverse the condition. Now this, the best way of going about this is to be a, an approach uh, aimed at body conditioning. At this stage, you should avoid any attempt at bulking until you've sorted out the hormonal balance and reversed the gyno. Consider that when you're bulking and you're increasing lean muscle mass extensively onto the chest area in particular, the chest will then look bigger, leading to the gyno becoming more noticeable. Body conditioning is the most effective for reducing the appearance of gyno. Now, provided you are getting enough protein and sufficient nutrients in your diet and you're exercising to a higher level of intense intensity, then you will still see muscle development happening. But for the purposes of reducing and eliminating gyno, uh, an approach aimed at body conditioning and aiming for a lean machine kind of physique, you know, think David Goggins here, is going to be very effective for this purpose. Now, remember... David used to be a 300 pound guy, you know, and now look at him. So, you know, this is what's possible with the body conditioning approach. It's advisable to observe a normal routine of resistance training for a full body development while you're doing this. Now, my usual routine is a four day split, which are workouts dedicated to each muscle group. My own workouts focus on conditioning, stamina and endurance anyway, so would be good for this purpose. Now my split consists of uh, day one is a full leg workout, um, exercises for quads, hamstrings, calves and glutes. Um, now my training equipment, because I train at home, I have a weighted vest, a bench, a pull up bar, kettlebells, dumbbells and resistance bands and I use uh, body weight exercises as well. I usually do an abs workout after I finish my training and then always 30 minutes of bag work afterwards for cardio. Day two, chest, biceps and abs. Again, after this, 30 minutes of cardio, bag work. Day three is usually a rest day and we'll get to rest days in a minute. Day four, delts, traps and triceps. Finishing with a quick obliques session. Your obliques are these muscles here. <clears throat> For those of you that don't know, followed by 30 minutes of bag work. Day five is lats, rear delts and abs. Again, ending with 30 minutes of bag work. Thinking like this is body conditioning. Days six and seven are usually, usually the weekend are rest days. On rest days, I usually go mountain biking, rucking. Rucking is a, a sport where you put loads of useless shit that weighs a lot in your rucksack and go hiking with it. Uh, it, includes, it in, increases stamina and helps to burn calories. It's quite effective for the purposes of gyno. Or I go hiking or walking. Now, while we are on the subject of walking, always walk and, or cycle if you can. Unless I'm traveling a long distance or I'm restricted by time and I've got to be somewhere by a certain time, I will usually walk or cycle. Get used to walking as often as you can. All those steps will add up and it's helping to tone and condition you. This is all progress. High intensity interval training and circuit training are also very effective for body conditioning and also calisthenics and body weight exercises performed to a high intensity are very effective training methods for the purpose of reducing gyno. I often implement high intensity interval uh, circuits and calisthenics training into my own routine. But if you have gyno, it's also going to be highly beneficial to add some extra sessions that would be a daily routine for you to be carried out separately from the usual resistance training. This routine is seven days a week and should also be done on rest days. For this extra side routine, this would consist of exercise which are focused on very high reps 
and using movements that are effective for toning the whole chest area, also the lower chest area where gyno is most commonly found. These extra sessions would ideally consist of sets of 50 to 100 reps, or for example, you could set yourself a minimum daily number, for example, 100 push-ups, 100 dips, etc. Also consider mixing it up and including both incline push-ups, decline push-ups, as well as regular push-ups. This will hit the entire, all, all areas of the chest and help to make it look more conditioned. Also butterflies, Holding light dumbbells or using a resistance band could work well for this purpose. Also consider um, adding in movements such as bodyweight squats or lunges in high reps because these are great for blasting away excess tissue. These routines can be performed in sets of fewer reps when you begin with, you know, just make sure that you set yourself a target number, say 100 of each movement, and make sure that you get all those reps done, even if it's taking you 10 sets to get each of those targets fulfilled. You're starting, you're making progress, you know, you can go from there. Just be certain to get all of those reps in every day. As you get more used to doing this, it will be far more beneficial if you can then reach a stage where you can do the movements in one or two sets. And over time also be looking to increase the number of reps performed per day in these sessions. Now, these high rep movements are excellent for toning and conditioning. These sessions should ideally be between 15 to 30 minutes per day. The thing is to become as active as you can, as often as you can, and in any way that you can. Take the stairs instead of the elevator, walk to the store and carry your groceries home, Walk instead of using your car, motorbike or e-scooter. The more active you are, the more conditioned you become. Even consider adding some forms of intense cardio to your routine. This can be running, cycling or bag work. The more conditioned you become, the more you will be able to blast away excess body tissue. But whatever you do, you know, word of warning here when it comes to training, please be sure to avoid steroids, pro-hormones, SARMs all of these performance enhancing things because all of these mess with your natural hormone production. Yes, it can be tempting to enhance your performance in the gym. Yes, it will certainly bring you quicker, noticeable results, but this kind of approach will only exacerbate the problem in the long term and likely cause you other health problems. Now consider that performance enhancing drugs can cause gyno in guys that didn't previously have gyno. So, you know, if you have gyno, they're only going to make your situation worse. So avoid if you can. Subscribe to this channel and follow this series for more.